Welcome to the Spurs 9501 podcast. From Kane to the lane, the final say on all things Tottenham. Here are your hosts, Steve, Ray, Cam and Jam. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Spurs 9501 podcast. Welcome back to all our YouTube viewers and our podcast listeners. This is Ray in London and we have also in London... Steve in London. Hello, guys. And Jamal this is... Connecticut. Um... Oh, sorry. oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> Jamal in Connecticut here. Welcome oh, back. Yeah, and this is Cam in Florida. Feeling a lot better, thanks, everybody. Be good wishes. Great, guys. Listen, we're going to do a quick video today for all our viewers on the 4-0 emphatic win against Sheffield United, the bottom team. Let me just go through the team. We had Lloris in goal, Aurier right back, Older Viral, Dyer, Reguion, Lo Celso and Hoiberg is a midfield. Front three of Bale, Ali and Son, and then up front, Harry Kane. Cam, welcome back, and could you want to go through the stats for us? I do indeed. I mean, interestingly, we have play we've played Sheffield United since uh, the 20th of April 1901, that first game, which we draw 2-2 in the FA Cup. And then a week later went on to win it. But overall, we've beaten them 38 times, we've drawn 27 times, and I was surprised by this stat. They've beaten us 29 times. So it's pretty equal, actually. Not yeah. not probably the best thing that you'd expect. I think the great thing today was the um, match stats. So but, uh, possession, 67% to Tottenham with 33% uh, for Sheffield. Um, we had 20 shots. They had eight. Can't remember all their eight, but they had eight. We had 11 on target and they had one on target. Uh, corners equal 6-6. Six, six. Um, and we committed eight fouls, and they committed nine fouls, of which I am sure we're going to be talking about during this thing, specifically the red card that didn't happen. Those yeah. are the clear stats. Uh, obviously, Thanks. four goals, four goals for Tottenham. Yeah. Thanks very much, Cam. Uh, Steve, let's come to you now. Uh, let's talk about the performance. Um, let's talk generally about the performance, what you thought about it. Well, I think we have to preface everything that it was against a Sheffield United team that uh, are bottom of the league and have already been relegated. However, sometimes that sort of uh, frees up uh, the team to play with a bit more sort of pride and just let it flow. Um, that didn't happen. They looked very poor today. I thought Spurs looked good. I enjoyed the game. Uh, we had some great goals and some good performances all round, really. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was, it was a good game. Obviously, Bale got a hat-trick, which was, was great. Um, and a fantastic goal from Son as well. Um, I, I think that Kane didn't really have the, the game you'd have expected him to do. I think he, he missed one where it um, almost flew out of the Spurs stadium, let alone any other stadium. So but we'll forgive him a uh, the odd uh, the odd off day. But no, I thought it was a great performance. I liked the fire, the spirit, everything we didn't have against Man City. I know Sheffield United aren't Man City, but I still think we could have taken some of that commitment into uh, the Man City game and given them a bit of a run for their money rather than just roll over like we did. So, um, all in all, I thought it was a great performance and we've got, I think, four more games and we've got to win all of those to give us a chance. What did you think, Steve, about Deli Ali coming into the side again? Well, I think it, I thought it was interesting, almost as interesting as new, his new haircut. Um, but Dreadlock I, I holiday. Thought, <laughs> no, I mean, I still quite like Deli Ali, but he can't really kick the ball, can he? And he can't really shoot. And he loves a little flick and he delays things and so on. But he does sort of bring something. And there was a, a few flashes of where he was sort of making a late run where um, the ball over the top into space, where he nearly got on the end of it. I think that happened a couple of times during the game. Uh, I still think he's got he's got something to offer. Um, I, I'm, but I'm still not convinced that he's going to be around for next season, to be honest. OK, great. Uh, Jam, let's come to you now. Your thoughts about the performance? Oh, it was it was um, such a breath of fresh air. You know, it was so nice to see. It was good. I mean, you know, Sheffield United already relegated. And as Steve said, they could potentially cause a threat, but probably not. Um, and they didn't. They didn't at all today. But, you know, if Jose Mourinho was in charge, this still would have been a hard hard fought one nil victory and we would have all been here having a, a much more grueling discussion whereas we can now be happy and enjoy enjoy that we've won this match comfortably and on top of that it was it was just there was a lot of, of good freedom and creativity and things that we've been missing since we've had Mourinho um you know uh, one thing I wanted to point out a Delhi start was nice I also liked his haircut um 
I, I think he's young enough to turn it around. You know, he's definitely he'll need some time back in the first team, starting um, playing that similar role he was playing today to show what he can really do. But um, it's good to see him there. Good to see him play. I think another thing that has changed, seeing all the world playing at the back more, that was awesome. Lots of good forward passing and 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 on target. Uh, someone was unlucky not to score with his that offside ruling. Um, and yeah, uh, it was it was an enjoyable match. I'm very happy. Very happy. Good. Good. Cam, let's come to you now. What do you think about the performance and the result? Oof. Obviously, you're happy with the result. What do you think yeah. about the performance? Well, firstly, I'd like to um, thank Ryan Mason for listening to me, for somebody at least listening to me at last <laughs> um, and taking my advice. Um, uh, two things that he's done that I've been begging the team to do. One was to drop Andombele. Um, and, and please tell me, any of you, if you thought he was missed. Um, and secondly, for starting to skip Bale a run in the team. I mean, six starts, six goals. And uh, why he wasn't playing on Sunday, but Ryan, I'd really like you to come somewhere and explain to us why he wasn't a starter. But, I mean, Bale is a confidence player. He's a player that needs a run in the team. He needs to feel. He said it today. If you listen to his interview, he said, I need to be happy. I need to be playing. And I need to feel good. I feel good. And I'll give you those kind of sublime goals that he gave us today. And I think that uh, um, it just really does go to show that if you play to a player's strength, like um, like we have, uh, what you can get out of this team. I mean, it's pretty amazing, I thought. Um, good performance all around. I know it was Sheffield United, but you can only beat what's in front of you. And I think we went about it pretty well. And I think Steve's right to mention, on a, we, we beat them 4-0 on a day when Harry Kane had a really bad game. Yep. Okay, good stuff, Cam. Um, uh, I was really happy with the performance. Uh, again, as everybody said, preface it with the fact that Sheffield United, but you still got to beat what's in front of you. As far as I can see, I don't know if you guys agree, there's no gimmies in the Premier League. You've really got to work to win. And when it was 1-0, they had a few chances. They could have made it 1-1. So I was really happy with that. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I was really happy with the fact that we scored four goals. Our goal difference is plus 22 now which is, could make a big difference. West Ham have got plus five or ten or something, and Liverpool are only plus 16. So I think we lost Cam for a minute. Are you back now, Cam, or not? I am. I just have a really weird noise coming in. Can anyone okay. else hear it? No? It's OK. No, it's fine. Yeah. Good. OK, so, yeah, um, I was really happy with the performance. 4-0, great win. So um, let me come to you, Cam. What do you think about the Los, Los Elso incident? Do you think it was a red card or not? You know, when I first saw it from a, a, a very quickly as it, went, as it flew by, um, it didn't look a red card to me, but when they sort of like showed you from a different angle and you saw the guy stomping on his face, I mean, literally stomping on his face, I don't think I've seen a clear red card um, anywhere. I mean, if you if you don't get a red card for putting your studs on the side of someone's head, then uh, what do you get a red card for? I really would like to know. And if VAR didn't see that, it makes a bit of a mockery of VAR, doesn't it? Because mm. the inconsistency on these red cards, I've seen some that didn't even look like red cards being sent off. Mm. I mean, if, how, how much more clearer can you do, can you get? You saw the stud marks in his, in, literally all along the side of his face. Um, if that is not a red card, then I, I really, uh, I'm baffled to wonder what is. Definite red card. What about you, Steve? Red card or not? I, I think it was a red card. I think in real time... You wonder if it is, but when you see it, um, VAR, I've got a feeling he glanced down as well. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure, but that was the sense I got that he, he, you know, he took aim and fired, as it were. Yeah. So yeah, it was a, it was a red card. It's just um, it produced one of the, another funny moment though, which was yeah. at the end, I think, when they were showing <laughs> the, the, the Celso looking like um, a character out of the Dandy or the Beano with a sort of huge piece of ice. Egg the, the spot, spot yeah. Face. I okay, imagine that was completely unnecessary and was for um, for effect, but um, it was yeah. it was a good effect, that's for sure. Yeah. But he should have been sent off. Jam, red card or not? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, like my dad said, I first seen it uh, from the first angle they showed us on VAR from the behind angle that they were showing. You know, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe not. Um, but then they, they turned the camera around after they made the VAR decision. I don't know if anyone noticed that on the TV, but that's how they played out here. They turned it around after and showed us the other angle. Where it's, it's like, how is that not a red card? If someone's getting a little slap on the face and that's reckless endangerment, you know, mm -hmm. and that's a red card. That's, I mean, Los Celso could have got really hurt and he got lucky yeah. he did not. Yeah. That was a very, very dangerous tackle or, or a play. Well, I'm going to make it a, a, a full set here because I think that's definitely a red card. I mean, it's a double red card, if you ask me. I mean, to put metal studs in anybody's eyes or face, you could be ri ripping their eye socket out or anything, you know, and he put his force in there. 
It should be banned. It should be retrospectively banned, I think. But I don't think you can do that. But it's a definite double red, double red card, if you ask me. A disgusting challenge. And I don't know how he got away with it. And it just makes me feel, give less and less, uh, you know, anything on VAR. You can't no do trust. anything. I mean, no trust in VAR at all. It wasn't okay. even a yellow card. I mean, that's the joke of it. Yeah, no, it's it exactly. It wasn't even a yellow card. It's ridiculous. Anyway, let's move on from that now. Let's talk. I'm going to ask you guys to talk about. So, um, Jam, talk me through Bale's hat trick and, you know, oh, what beautiful. you saw. Tell us, talk us, talk us, and talk, tell us your views about your thoughts about Bale's hat trick. I mean, it was just so. I'm so happy for Bale to re kind of turn this around. This this whole loan spell. Um, I would definitely take him back at in the current form. I would take him back for another season if we could get him. Um, and it was it was it was you know um almost like the old Bale. He definitely his pace wasn't there, but his finishing was on point. First goal, nice setup from Oreo. A very nice pass. He got two assists today, so that's uh you know congratulations to him. Um, but but it was all Bale. Um, wonderful little dink over the keeper on the first goal. Second goal uh, kept up with Son. Son did the excellent, excellent breakaway on there on the corner, and then Bell finished. Had so much time to place his shot, yeah. and the third goal. Um, you you have to remind me on how that finished. The third goal. It was a, assist by Stephen Bergwijn. Oh, yeah, uh, Aurier, sorry, Aurier, 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 Aurier. Pretty much a yeah. tapping. Oh, oh no, it was outside the box. He hit it yeah, straight low and yeah. across. Yeah, yeah. Good shot, good shot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, So great hat trick by Bale. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, well, hold on, hold on, Cam. Hold on, hold on. I just want to finish off a of bail. So it's, I'm going to ask you about something else, Cam, because I know you love bail, but I'm not going to ask you to talk about bail. Well, I've taken um, a lot of stick about bail over the year, over this season, and I think that um, Steve did say at the beginning of the season, if we get ten goals out of bail, that we'll be doing very well. Well, he's got nine in the Premier League, and that is with the being sat on the bench by Mourinho for seventy-five percent of the games. So stick that in your pipe. <laughs> but anyway, go on. <laughs> 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 he took the words right out of my mouth. I don't know what to say now, actually. I forgot what I was going to say. Go on, that talk about Bale, come on, or have you just done it? Uh, well, I just wanted to say that I've taken a lot of stick on the show over the time for Bale, and the amount of times that he was sitting there, as you say, he's a confidence player. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, a the, the third defender, he's a player that plays in the, in the, in the third of the, of the other team's uh, uh, third, sorry. And uh, mm -hmm. that's not where Tottenham have been playing under Mourinho. We've been playing in our own third yeah, rather than the yeah. other team's third. So Understood, the yeah. criticism that Bale has been getting all season is the fact that he's, he, he's, he's, not, he's not performing. Of course he's not performing because we're playing at the wrong end of the pitch. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. today, when Ryan Mason has allowed everybody to basically play to their potential, which is what I thought that he was doing, because, I mean, Son, who's been so out of form, looked yeah. like a player back in form suddenly today. I mean, yeah, yeah, unlucky with the offside goal, but even that, what a great finish that Second was. Finish. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, even his goal was sublime. Um, and then Bell, yeah. given that kind of freedom, I mean, the, the, his goal against Southampton proved it. All he needed was a split second, uh, 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 um, a, a space that you can thread the ball through an eye of a needle and he'll get you a goal. And he did that with his first goal. And I, and it, I, I, I hate to think if we'd been playing like this all season, how many goals would he have got if he'd been given yeah, a chance yeah. this season? OK, OK. Uh, thanks, Cam. Steve, uh, let's come to you now. A player from you that gets a lot of stick has got two assists, Serge Aurier. Talk about Aurier and maybe let me put this into your thought. Maybe we move him from right back to right wing back and that's a better position where he doesn't have to defend. What do you think? Because he's definitely got the tools. A great pass for Bale, the first one. Beautiful pass. Well, I mean, he's, he's got two assists. Has he had any other assists this season? I'm not sure. Yeah, credit where it's due. I think he was the, after, after Bale, he was the, the um, man of the match. Yeah, I put him down. So, I'm, you know, and I, 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 fair enough, really. But again, we were playing Sheffield. We weren't playing Man City or... Yeah, but these are the teams we've lost to before and they drew 1-1 with us last year. So yeah, no, absolutely. Let's not put that down, yeah. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, um, I don't disagree. I think Aurea played very well. Whether he should be wing-back, I, I always prefer to see him further up the fit, pitch because yeah. I think that if there's going to be a mistake, let's make it in their half rather than uh, in our penalty area or wherever. So mm. I thought he played very well. Um, we do need... To be able to defend because there will be other teams we play where there we will have to defend mm. but today and certainly i think it was for bale's hat trick goal he hit the weight of pass was right beautiful and beautiful. you know I, i've pass. seen him you know he, 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 he puts it behind players he overhits it he underhits it he mm -hmm. very rarely cushions it into their path 
I think partly because some of the shackles are off, you know, yeah. they're allowed to play a bit rather than yeah. Yeah. play yeah. to a system. You know, it's not low block, high block, big block, fat block, or whatever <laughs> godforsaken Come on, uh, that block. set of, uh, you know, tactics we're supposed <laughs> to be employing. Uh, well, we know it, don't we? You know, that it, a, a sub used to come on with Mourinho and they'd be shown a couple of spreadsheets and some charts. It's ridiculous. Let, let yeah. people play a bit to their strengths, I think, as Kamal said, and yeah. then things will flow. And maybe maybe there's a real player inside Aurea that I've missed all along, so I apologise okay. to him. Okay, I'm, sure be, I'm sure he's I'm been sure following everything I've been saying. Yeah, I'm there. sure he has, yes. Jam, what did you think about Deli Ali's performance? I think Delhi, there's a lot still to be decided from Delhi, but it was much better than any other performance he's had this season. Um, barring maybe that uh, Carling Cup match we had, I don't remember against who, Marine maybe. Um, uh, but other than that, Delhi was making flicks. He had a few nutmegs during the match, which I enjoyed. Um, he, he was kind of back to free old Delhi with a little smile on his face. And I think that's, that's only a good thing because we know how good he can be when he's when he's at the top of his game. Yeah. So if you get a few runs in the in, in match, get a good preseason on, and, and I mean, he's not going to get picked for a year or so. Huh? But no. um, he might have another good season. He might have something to prove. But that's okay. that's all down to Deli Ali. We know what yeah. he can do. Okay, excellent. One thing I want to say is I, I'm really happy that Toby's playing these long diagonals. I miss these long diagonal passes from Toby. Yeah. Beautiful passes. You know, we miss that. We don't, or, you know, Dyer's not possible, can't do it. Toby really brought that in. Again, it was Sheffield United, so they didn't have to defend that greatly, but they did a good job, kept a clean sheet. Listen, guys, we're going to wrap it up in a minute. I want to come to you. I want to put a little scenario in your, in your head. So next week we're playing Leeds away. Let's just assume, it's a big assumption, that we beat Leeds at 12.30. That means we're two points behind Chelsea. Chelsea are playing Man City. Let's assume the Man City win. We could be level two points behind Chelsea with three games to go, which gives us a decent chance. So I'm going to come to you again now, Cam. Do you think we can get top four or not? I think that the, the difference today, I know Sheffield United, uh, our toughest game to come is going to be Leicester um, away, I believe. That, yeah. uh, um, but uh, um, it's, a, it's what I liked about today was the shackles were off and the freedom and we played to players' strengths. We played to Son's strengths. We played to Bell's strengths. And um, we played to Kane's strengths, but Kane had a bad game. And, and I'm glad in a way that Kane had a bad game because it proves we can still win the games when Kane has a bad game. Yeah, um, yeah. That, he won't always have a bad game and he will probably, you know, um, he's got that out of the system. Maybe he'll have some good games. So, yeah. very optimistic. I think we're, what, I'm, what I do like about uh, um, what Mason's been doing and, and why I'm optimistic about Leeds is because I like the way that he's, his thinking is very much along the lines of what we've been talking about and the way that he's been putting that team out. Hoybier, I don't know if any of you noticed, was actually playing in longer balls and he's played all season. He never would make a pass more than five feet to the player next no. to him. But he actually played some long balls and that in itself was pretty refreshing. So, again, shackles off there. I think that's good. I think Dyer made one or two mistakes and against a better team, we could have been very badly punished. Um, and so did Lo Celso. I'm still unconvinced that Lo Celso is absolutely at his peak and he's match fit. But one thing I have to say that I did like about Mason is he seems to be getting a good uh, um, response from Winks and I thought Delhi and from Delhi today. And if he can get those two players back to somewhere where they used to be when we when we played, when they had their best games against Real Madrid, as you probably remember, they were both the best players. Delhi scored two, and uh, um, Wings played uh, Ronaldo off the park. Then that's got to be a bonus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from my point of view, it's exactly what Cam says. It looks like the, the fear has been taken out of the players. They're not scared to play play long balls. They're not scared to play intricate passing. They're not always looking for the easy ball now or the straight, uh, risk less risky ball. They're playing risky balls, which is a lot good. So, I think we can still do it, but we need other teams to slip up, which is a big issue. But I think we've got a chance against Leeds because they always give you a chance. Uh, let's come to you, Steve. Do, can we still get top four or not? I know you said no previously. What do you think now? I, I still think no, I'm afraid, because it's not in our hands. Uh, all yeah. we can do is is try and win our remaining games. And I mm -hmm. think they're, they're winnable. Yeah. Um, and we've got to wait for... Um, Chelsea really haven't we to slip yeah. up but at least we've, we've got we're in with a sniff now aren't we I yeah. think yeah. Um, not just because of the result but because of the way we, we play and if we play like that and it's not it will be harder against the teams we've got to play yeah. then I think we stand a chance whereas if we were just sitting back and trying to sneak a goal you know I and mean, we've been I think we think we've dropped 20 points from yeah. positions where we were um, we were ahead and you think if we'd have been able to hold those 
um, those leads where we would be in the league now. And that has been because we were so reticent about being a little bit more adventurous. And, you know, if you were a Spurs player who played in the Mourinho team and then played like you did today, I mean, it'd be a joy, wouldn't it? It'd be an absolute joy. Yeah. You'd start to yeah. think, well, actually, I quite like football now. Well, even <laughs> even half of those 20 points, 10 points we'd have held on to, yeah. we'd have been third or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Jam, do you think we can do top four or not? Give me I've some been, positivity, been, Jam. Yeah, no, I was going to say I've been very negative in the Mourinho days. And if Mourinho was still a manager, I would say, no, it's not going to happen. But I am... I am on an upswing, I'm very happy. I think Mason Mance, uh, uh, Mason, Ryan Mason is doing a great job, and um, <laughs> he's gonna. <laughs> um, I, 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 we just need to win. Um, if we look at Leicester, they have to play City and they still have to play Chelsea and they have to yeah. play us, right? Yeah. So um, I think I think they're the team that could still step up. Okay. Uh, I think we can absolutely potentially get there. You know, as long as we so, as long as we leave on a high, right? Let's stick with you now, Jam. What's your prediction for the Leeds match next week? Leeds match. Uh, let's go three one. We should okay. beat them easily. What about you, Cam? 3-1. Yep. Steve? 2-0 to Spurs. Steve, you always steal my thunder. I was going to say 2-0 as well. I'm going to say two. I'm going to say 2-1 now because okay. I can't let's be the same as Steve. I'm going to say we're going to win 2-1. <laughs> so, everybody, thank you very much for listening to the top, uh, Spurs 95.01 podcast. All our YouTube viewers, thank you for watching. And, um, and it's goodbye from Ray in London. Steve? Thanks. Goodbye from Steve in London. Come on, you Lily Whites. Jam? Yeah. Come on, you Spurs from Jam in Connecticut. And it's goodbye from Kamal and from my uh, granddaughter, Rosie, who's going to say, Come on, you Spurs. Can you say Come that? Come on, Rosie. Excellent. Okay, Come on, you. Well done, Rosie. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. You've been listening to the Spurs 9501 podcast. Stay in touch, continue the debate, and let us know what you want to discuss by finding us on YouTube. Tune in after the next match day for more insight. Thanks for listening.